Well, Quebec, well, South Africa is no doubt a melting pot of Africa's language diversity with 11 official languages. The country holds the record of the highest number of official languages in the world. But with such linguistic diversity comes a number of challenges, such as which language to use as a medium of instruction at basic education level. Uh, since South Africa is a former British colony, English tends to be the dominant language in South Africa. Politicians and scholars have often said that to rid the country of the colonial remnants, institutions such as the legal and education systems have to be Afrocentric. Then, what role do African languages have to play in the decolonization process? How do we mainstream the use of African languages in the country with 11 official languages? Let's explore this subject. Uh, and joining us in studio is Professor Emeritus Anne Maria Birkus, uh, a linguistic professor at the University of Johannesburg. And we also have Professor Leketi Makalela, the director of the Hub for Multilingual Education and Literacies at WITS Universities. Professors, Thank you very much indeed for your time. Professor, if I can start with it, Professor Birkes. I mean, when we talk about the use of mother tongue language, indigenous languages, some say it's being diminished. The quality of these indigenous languages is being diminished due at the expense of, of English because we're using to accommodate English. Others say certain languages face extinction. Am I being dramatic am i am i being alarmist or is there an existential threat here i do not think you are being alarmist uh, i think that not only the quality but uh, primarily the status yeah. of the indigenous languages have been diminished uh, sadly to say uh, subsequent to us adopting a multilingual language policy mm. as enshrined in in the constitution section six of the constitution and, and I, I, must, I must haste to say that it's not only in South Africa, it's, it's, a, it's a colonial Africa thing, mm. that the colonial languages are fairly dominant and mm. play dominant roles in society. Yeah. Uh, they are, they, the, the, the indigenous languages are not mainstreamed, as you, as you said. Mm. Mm. And I think in South Africa, we have languages that are capable of uh, taking their full space yeah. in the mainstream area, but they are being slowly relegated to the back seat because of the dominance and the prestige of the colonial language yeah. English. Yeah. So yes, that that is that is the status quo. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something to be done. There should uh, s something should be done mm. because we have big um, languages, important languages. Yeah. I mean, Isulu is is the biggest language mm. in South mm. Africa and it's slowly being relegated. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Professor Makalela, uh, do you agree? Do you, do you think that English is so dominant that these indigenous languages are pushed to, to one side? Because often people's intelligence, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a wrong perception, but people's intelligence mm. are often directly linked to how good they speak English, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that is uh, that's true, and, and that is a wrong perception yeah. because uh, many people associate being schooled, being educated with uh, speaking English, but um, the whole education uh, spectrum is about um, making sense of the world around you mm. Mm. and making sense of who you are. So I take this as a sense-making project. So if you learn in a language that you don't understand, mm. and which is the biggest crisis we have uh, all over Africa, is that uh, we are you know, encouraging poverty of mind yeah. and poverty of identity. And once you lose these two uh, components of what makes you human, uh, you're almost, that's a human rights infringement. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Let's just talk about some of these languages that are under threat. And mm -hmm. we see some of the Khoisan mm -hmm. uh, languages uh, are endangered. I think it's even under UNESCO mm -hmm. has, uh, you know, said that, uh, listed as endangered. Mm -hmm. And there are several communities that are trying to revive uh, languages such as Nama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the... the the, the, I think the big question here is if you don't have a language, that's, that's a problem. Yeah. You're almost relegated to being subhuman in, in very big ways. So um, it makes sense um, in South Africa to revive. If you have got speakers of those languages, it makes a whole lot of sense for me. Yeah. Um, 
uh, is revival. But the bulk majority of the languages we have today, we are not yet in mm. that state. Uh, they are used in the communities, they are used everywhere. They are, um, we are not in, in, in countries like Canada where we have got uh, what they call the, um, the indigenous languages yeah. of the country are almost in extinction mm -hmm. at the moment. So there's a whole <coughs> lot of uh, revival. Uh, South Africa is still better off yeah. and we can do a whole lot of work. Uh, not to be there. Sure. Uh, professors, um, there was an author and creative writer, uh, writing lecturer earlier on, spoke, uh, spoke to our colleagues uh, at Morning Live, and he was weighing in on these issues. So I've got this clip, I just want to play it. It's, uh, it's Sabata Moka Mokaye, and an author and creative writing lecturer, talking to these very issues. Let's play this clip. There is no language that is useless. Each language is a body of knowledge or is a way of knowing, it's a philosophy. It's not just a means to communicate. So I think right now, uh, South Africa is, we are rebuilding a nation that, that was polarized, that was broken down, that was traumatized. And part of doing that includes making sure that people are also culturally free. And being culturally free is dipped in languages that people speak. So each language needs to be written down in order to grow, in order to develop. So I think um, we, we need to, to write down our languages to make sure that they grow. Now, just looking back at apartheid and colonialism, you just spoken of rebuilding a nation which has been previously polarized. How has that influenced indigenous people in South Africa? Well, firstly, for a long time, uh, African languages were not official languages in the country, which means that there were, there were not so, so much resources invested in the development and growth of African languages. And, and that can only have negative effects. It means that people would not be proud of these languages. These languages cannot be used as languages of business, of education, of government, and so on. So. The, the past, apartheid, colonialism, impacted negatively on these languages, marginalized these languages. In fact, we already have languages that are dying out right now. All right, so I want to just pause this uh, discussion for now. It's uh, seemingly a busy news day today. I want to take you to Kimberley, uh, where the National Science Week has been launched. And I understand at the lecture now is Minister Blade Inzamani. So